and shine, my fellow Tottenham fans. Get yourself out of bed because it is game day. It's your boy, Big Dave, here at the Irish Hotspur, bringing you your predicted lineup as Tottenham welcome Brentford in a midweek London derby. So get yourselves up and get yourselves ready for the game. Now, we do only have the league to play for. That's all that's left on the cards for Tottenham this season. We currently sit fifth, eight points off league leaders, Liverpool. What I will say is, though, we've got a favourable run of fixtures now where I do hope we can get a couple of wins back to back and let's see where that takes us. So, guys, give me in the in the, in the comment section below your prediction on where you think Tottenham are going to finish in the Premier League this season. But let's get into it. Let's bring you the predicted lineup that I think Ange Postacoglu will select to take all three points uh, away with us today. And Guglielmo Vicario will be back in the sticks despite his mistake in the FA Cup that led to Man City's goal. Of course, an in-swinging corner from De Bruyne. Vicario probably should have dealt with it a lot better on the night. I know a lot of people are probably claiming... Oh, it's a free kick. Look, personally, I don't think it is. I think it's a six-yard box. As the old expression goes, the keeper has to come and take man and ball and just to deal with it. Um, and it is something that Man City has exploited. Other teams have exploited, you know, in games beforehand. And something I think Brentford are going to look to exploit as well. So he's going to have to dust himself down, pick himself up and try and rid himself of that mistake. Head into this Brentford game. Command your six-yard box because they will test him with some early corners. Um, and hopefully keep a clean sheet and keep Ivan Tony out from making it two goals in two games on his return from his betting scandal. But he's been absolutely superb this season, so I'm not going to hammer him on that mistake. Now, we will move on to the left back, and we will. It is, of course, the return of Destiny Adoji. He's been enjoying a particularly strong spell at left back for Tottenham since his sort of suspensions are behind him. And against City, he made three tackles, two clearances, and one interception, while also winning eight of his 14 ground duels as he kept Phil Foden quiet. Now, Brentford's wingers have caused Tottenham a lot of trouble in the past, especially on the breakaway. And we will need another masterclass. Again, from Destiny Adoji to stop them counters today. But he's locked up that left-hand side all season, and I see no reason why it's not set to continue. Two little things um, going forward against Man City. I thought he was disappointing on the ball. A lot of heavy touches where he ended up sort of getting turned over. I think he needs to be a little bit sharper in that regard because in big games, you know, these fullbacks will have time to get on the ball and they sometimes will have to be our outlet. So he has to be a bit better in that regard. And also, is it just me or is it any time Destiny or Doji fouls someone, the referee just wants to book them? I mean, the amount of fouls that Man City players laid on us, no bookings. Destiny or Doji makes one tackle straight out with the yellow card. It's really, really frustrating in that regard. Now, moving on to right back, and it is the return of post Man Poro, who did not deliver against Man City. Just a couple of things on Pedro Poro from the night. Um, I thought offensively, I didn't think he was great. You know, there was a lot of times he was in good positions to be able to slide players through, and they were often overhit or wide of where they were supposed to go, which was extremely letting down. However, it does maybe say how good he has been of late, how much he has stepped up in other people's absence, and how much we actually rely on him to create. So, and it probably also highlights how others need to sort of step up in that regard as well. Also, near the end of the game, I found myself very, very frustrated with him. We're 1-0 down, and he's just over there fouling Doku like there's no tomorrow. It's like he absolutely lost his head, lost control of his emotions, and just wanted to fight them. I love that when we're winning. Waste time, no problem. But when we're losing, you keep your head, you get that ball, and you look to go and create another attack. There was still enough time in injury time for us to look to go and create something. And I almost felt at that point he gave up. So that's something for me he needs to watch. I love the emotion and, you know, I love the passion that he shows. But do it in the right way. Use that as motivation. You don't like being one nailed down? Use that as motivation to go and try and create something going forward and uh, take it out on him that way it's when, when, when we're celebrating the late equaliser or something like that. Um, but look, he's had two really tough tests over the last couple of weeks coming up against Rasher from United and Doku um, at times against Man City as well. Um, so hopefully this week will be a little bit easier from him. We won't have to 
ask of much of him from a, def a defensive sort of standpoint. And hopefully going forward, he can have a massive impact on this game. Set pieces is an area we should look to exploit, and we have done in recent weeks. And hopefully he can step up and find them right deliveries again. But also, I want to see more of him in-game. When he gets that ball, I want to see him cross that ball more. If, other, if the other players in the team and wingers don't want to do that, get on the ball, take the responsibility, and go and do it yourself, Pedro, because you have that ability in you. One of the best technical right-backs I've ever seen at Tottenham Hotspur. Now, moving into centre-back, and we will start with Christian Romero. Um... Now, I know there was questions in the press conference asking for Dragusin, and I think Posta Cogley sort of swatted them away and maybe alluded to that there will be game time coming up with games coming in sort of thick and fast, just not right now. Now, I can understand them, cause because Brentford are a menace from set pieces. Their players are on bonuses from set pieces. It's an area that they've highlighted that can give them an advantage of games. That's why they attack them so badly. And if you don't believe me, go and check out Ben Me on the Fuzzcast. He references that. Um, so, Romero, so, sorry, I can understand why there's cause for Dragosin. He would definitely help in that department. However, I do think we'll see Christian Romero play this game. Uh, we need him on the ball. We're going to spend long periods of time on the ball in possession. And one thing Romero has is a pass that can unlock somebody, you know, one that's not an obvious pass into midfield, one that he can go beyond that if he needs to. So he'll be absolutely crucial in possession in that regard as well. Interesting fact as well, Romero's the fourth uh, joint highest goal scorer in the Tottenham squad in the Premier League so far with three goals to his name. Um now, he was on the score sheet and he capitalised on, I think it was either a free kick or a corner against Brentford in the first game of the season. And we got our run bomb. Will we see him on the score sheet again uh, tonight? Let me know in the comment section below, please. Now, moving on to his partner in crime. And we have gone with Van der Ice Cold Veins, who I absolutely love. If you remember when I'd done the Welcome to Tottenham video, I said this guy could be a £100 million player and he is definitely on course to do that. Was absolutely superb against Man City. Helped the Doji lock down that left-hand side. No trouble from there all night. And also mopped up everything in behind with ease. At times, Phil Foden was looking for that running behind and he didn't. He just sort of... You could see the defeat on his face when he knew that Van de Ven was running. You know, he's just bigger than him. He's stronger than him. He's faster than him. And he left in a couple of challenges on Ford, which I absolutely love. He doesn't need any excuse to mix it up at times. Absolutely brilliant. And the measure of the player, it just goes to show how easy he slotted back into that back line. No problems whatsoever. It's like he was never away. Absolutely love the guy. Set pieces and crosses, as I alluded to, Brentford will absolutely paste us with. I do think Van de Ven could have been a little bit more switched on from that set piece. I know it's probably nitpicking, but Ake was the first to react. I would obviously prefer it was Van de Ven was the first one to react and could have probably given Vicario a little bit of protection as well. So maybe could do with staying a little bit more switched on in that regard. But like I said, I am nitpicking. Now, moving on to the midfield, who I thought were very disappointing Friday night and probably let us down. One guy who I thought was not his usual self, and that was Rodrigo Bentincor. However, he will be selected again today, and he's going to have a massive part to play in today. He's going to be that guy that's going to take that ball, and he's going to dictate the, the play. He's going to slow it down, quicken it up. He's going to dictate the tempo of the game, especially how we play in possession. Not only that, we also need that bit of X factor from him. We know if Hoiberg or Skip play in there, they're not going to provide that. So at times, I want to see him be a little bit braver. Drive out players, take them on, have a couple of shots, try some different things. Don't always take the easy option out, the easy pass out. He's going to have a massive part to play in today's game. Also, he's going to have to be a bit wary on the counter as well, being in that position. With Doji and Poro, I presume they're going to be playing very, very high because we're going to be camped in their half. He'll have to basically be able to create across either side to be able to snuff out them counter-attacks. So I'm expecting a big day at the office from Rodrigo Bentincor. Now, moving on to pierre Emil Hoiberg. I have gone with him. And the reason being, we got the news during the week that he is staying at the football club and that he is committed between now and the end of the season. And he has already had that conversation with Posta Koglu. For me, I sort of alluded to it before, that Oli Skip was only being selected ahead of Hoiberg because Hoiberg was looking for a January move out of here. But Hoiberg is a much better player than Skip. 
I actually thought Hoiberg came in for some very harsh criticism after the Man City game. I get why, because he had two massive mistakes near the end, which really could have cost us. But on the whole, I actually thought he had a sort of solid all-round night, you know, from what we come to expect from Pierre and Hoiberg. And let's see what he can do today. You know, sometimes he pops up at the edge of the box with a shot. Let's see if we can get a Zinedine Salzburg special out of him. And then that brings me on to the return of Golden Balls. Number 10, James Madison. And boy, oh boy, have we missed him. Now, he did come off the bench against, against Man City and sort of failed to have an impact, that impact. And I can understand why. It's a very hard game to come into and try and get up to grips with, especially out of possession, but also in possession with how quickly Man City were pressing us. However, I do expect to see a much better James Madison uh, performance here against Brentford. What we're looking for Madison is, is that creativity. Now, we have to understand we're probably only going to get about 60, 65 minutes out of the guy. So we have to take full advantage of him being on that pitch. In the 12 games that James Madison played before his injury, came up with, I think it was six assists and three goals. We need to get him back into that form. That was absolutely crucial for us going forward. Creativity and the creation of chances have been a massive problem over the last number of games, it wasn't just Man City where we only had one shot on goal. Brentford, before that, we were poor, failed to create a lot. Nottingham Forest took the two chances on offer that day, but didn't create an awful lot as well. So it's been going on for a long period of time. So him coming back will be absolutely crucial. And again, with Brentford looking to sit everyone behind the ball and sit more or less deep on the edge of their box, we need his creativity. Try things. I don't care if you overhit them. Try things. Get your wingers or fullbacks running in. From, from out wide, in behind the fullbacks, try play it up over the top, have a couple of pop shots, something he was absolutely brilliant at. And when he does uh, unleash them shots, it almost draws players out to stop them, which then creates other little pockets of space. So hopefully we can get the James Madison that we had before his injury. Now we will move on over to left winger and we will stick with Speedo, Timo, Turner, a.k.a. Werner, Werner on the dance floor. Now, I know Sean in the creative prediction has him down for a goal today. I'll be brutally honest. It, it's going to be a tough day at the office for him. Brentford are going to sit everyone behind the ball, so we're not going to be able to use that raw, explosive pace that we have come to know from Timo Werner where we can play him in behind. What he will have to do is show us something a little bit different. He's going to have to be a lot better with his feet. He's going to have to look to get on his, beat his man on the outside and put in good deliveries in the box. Um, and hopefully he can do that. It's going to be a big test. It's going to be a different test because against Man United and City, there is space where we could bring uh, the best of Werner's attributes out of him. Now it's going to be a different test. So let's see how he stands up to that. And I hope he answers the question. I'd love him to nick a goal today. I think it'd do his confidence the absolute world of good. And it would help us win the game as well. Now we will move over onto the right wing. And I have dropped ben and Brennan Johnson. And I have gone with Kulazeski. Johnson, for me, was absolutely piss poor against Man City. He completed 0% of his crosses, 50% of his passes, and won zero of his three duels which he contested. He was also dribbled past once, gave possession away 13 times, and missed Spurs' only big chance of the match. And them statistics are sort of becoming a very common team when it comes to Brennan Johnson after every single game. And I don't put it all on Brennan Johnson. At the end of the day, if we had the options, we wouldn't just keep rolling him out there. and um, We would give him time to maybe take him out of the spotlight a little bit and take the pressure off him. We haven't been able to do that. However... You keep putting the kid out like that, you're going to damage him in the long run and you may actually kill off his potential and kill off his confidence altogether. <clears throat> so for to me today, it's 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 vital for him. We take that pressure off him, use him as an impact substitution late in the game where he can use that pace to his advantage when other players are tired. And start with Kulazeski. Now, I know a lot of people have their problems with Kulazeski off the right-hand side, but stats actually tell you that he's created more opportunities for Tottenham Hotspur off that right-hand side than any other winger in this uh, in, in the club to date. But amazingly enough, doesn't have an assist to his name. Now, there are times some of them have been overhit, you know, others haven't took their chances. <clears throat> but that will come right. You keep doing the right thing. You keep looking to create, keep putting balls in the box, L look to take shots. That will come for you at some point, you know, and they'll come in a flurry. 
He's been really disappointed in the last while. With Son out, you're really looking at him to be that guy in the forward line to sort of step up. Now, I would argue he's been unlucky because he's had to play through the middle and out on the right-hand side and sort of double up. So it sort of disrupts him sort of rhythm-wise. However, for me, get him back out to the right-hand side and get him creating chances. He's a menace out there. That's one thing he is. And he gives us that different angle of being able to swing balls in, cut inside. It allows Poro to go on the outside or other players, if they're smart enough to take that run on the outside and be fed that way, it gives us different options. Plus, if we get the ball out to left-hand side and Werner or Adoji or Madison can deliver it, you can have Kulu coming in at the back post like he did against Man City and bagging a goal that way. But for me, I want to see him back out on that right-hand side, as you can tell. And then that brings me on to the last player of the day, and that is our striker, the man who carries the weight of expectancy of the fan base on his shoulders right now. And that is Rich Harrison. Right now, he is the club's only um, senior striking option available. And despite sort of, I'd argue, a quiet performance against City in terms of chances and on the ball, he worked like a dog off the ball, which is something maybe Vernon Johnson didn't do, which I felt a little bit down about. If you're not playing well on the ball, at least work like a dog off the ball. And I know exactly what I'm going to get from Richarlison. Now, the first game against uh, the reverse fixture against Brentford, first game of the season, he had a tough afternoon. Many players couldn't link up with him. Went on the ball, went to him, it sort of broke down. It was a very frustrating evening. And it could be another very frustrating evening for him again. You know, even when we had Son and Madison fully fit, you know, we didn't create an awful lot of chances that day. So hopefully today we can get balls in the box. He's confident he will get on the end of them and he can nick a goal. For me, he needs to score today. No excuses. In games like this before, Kane has stepped up, bagged a goal, you know, and been able to get us over the line. And this is what we need from a striker. You can't rely on two defenders like we did earlier on in the season, Emerson and Romero, to be able to bag the goals again. So we really do need him to step up. But he's been in on absolute fire lately. You know, bar the Man City game, I think he's been absolutely a credit to himself and, a, you know, an example to others. If you're going through adversity, an example to Brendan Johnson, for instance, if you're going through a true adversity, things aren't going right and the Spurs fans are on your, your back, this is how you react to it. So maybe it could be important to not only us in the long run, but also Brennan Johnson by setting the example. But nonetheless, I want to be pigeon dancing. It's the greatest joy I get over the weekend. So that's my predicted lineup that I have, that I think Posta Coglu will select to beat Brentford today. In the comments section, you've been absolutely fantastic with your comments. Please keep getting them in. Let me know what your team selection is for today. Let me know um, on, on the midfield, on the right wing, how we're going to go about that. Let me know Timo Werner because it may be might not be a game that suits his strengths, especially with his pace. Do you put him down the middle and put Richardson out left, maybe? There's a couple of things we can do. But also, leave me your score prediction. Smash that like button if you do enjoy these. And I'll see you again later on for the pre-match build-up at 4 p.m. As always, come on, you Spurs. In the mighty hands, Poster Cogman. We trust. We never stop. Let's go.